Um, my name is Christopher Hoffmann. Um, I'm uh, working for SUSE for quite a while now. It's actually uh, 16 years now. And um, after I uh, spent a while uh, in different other teams, for example, also the Open SUSE team, uh, I think it was about four years ago when we kind of started or continued developing uh, also OpenQA. We took it over from Bernhard Wiedemann. And after I changed to the YAS team uh, two years ago, um, it was kind of a good coincidence that we also decided in the YAS team to uh, use OpenQA a bit. Um, so as, actually this talk should not be about uh, basics of OpenQA. Um, it's just uh, to explain it in a nutshell, um, OpenQA tests our installation process. Um, it more or less does this by uh, just sending key presses to a QAMO instance where an installation is running. And it checks back if uh, whether um, that happens what should happen by matching screenshots. This is more or less like the famous monkey in a typewriter, uh, more or less. Um, and since uh, the installation process is, let's say, nearly 100% Yast, um, we as the Yast team and what we are develop developing uh, affects uh, a test run of OpenQA quite a lot. So whenever we change something, um, it is most likely that we even break a test run in uh, OpenQA, because even a slight change in the UI, for example, um, lets the test run fail. Um, and since we are, in the meanwhile, also working together with uh, the with a UI design team, um, this happens quite often that we change actually a UI. And what to do now? What, uh, how to avoid those breakages as much as possible and help our, help our QA department? Um, we should test as soon as possible. So if we change something in Yast, then we should even or always keep in mind that um, this might somehow affect OpenQA and QA department. And so we can even kind of warn the people from QA um, that we, ex we change something what they should expect to break a test run. Um, and what we also try to do is uh, that we can even uh, maybe deliver an adapted test run or the matching screenshots uh, together with a new feature. Yeah. So uh, to um, be able to test what we changed, we, of course, need to get our new software, our new packages into, Yas, uh, into OpenQA. Um, since OpenQA tests ISO images, the um, obvious thing would be, uh, let's create ISO images and test it. And maybe even on every package submission of any Yast package. But since mastering a DVD image uh, takes quite some time and this, uh, needs some resources, um, maybe the better approach would be just pack together what we changed, put it in a driver update disk. I hope you uh, know this feature actually. You can, uh, yeah, I'll show you later. Um, you put all the changed stuff on the driver update disk and this just contains a few packages. It's easily to masterable, easy to master and then you can feed it uh, into OpenQA, and this is 
Yeah, to create such a driver update disk, uh, there's a nice command. It's actually uh, developed by one of our team members, and uh, there's an extra package for that. Just use this command line. Um, then you uh, driver update disk falls out, put it on an FTP server, and then um, if you are kind of familiar with OpenQA, um, schedule a test run with this parameter to let uh, in, uh, just include a driver update disk uh, into, uh, into the boot, uh, into the instances, sorry. Um, to do this, you of course need uh, shell access to uh, the machine who actually runs the test. And if we would use uh, the official instances of OpenQA, kind of every developer who wants to test something needs access to that machine, and this is obviously not a good idea. Um, and to develop tests and enhance tests, you need this access more or less anyway, so um, most, the most obvious, uh, most best idea would be just run your own OpenQA instance on your machine, but um, if you don't develop OpenQA tests that much, um, you don't need it that often, and after a while of not using it, you need to update everything Let's say after two, uh, two months, you need to update everything, the testing software itself and the test runs and all the needles. And this is annoying effort that not everyone has to do uh, on its own. So what we did in our team, uh, we decided to get an own uh, OpenQA server for our team where we can more or less offer our team members um, a running OpenQA instance where they also can go and de develop. And the side effect is that it's much more powerful than most of the desktop machines you have on your, on your desk. So, um, I was maybe a bit fast with this slide, but um, um, how can one develop tests on a, a machine Oh, how can several people together develop tests on a machine without breaking the other guy's stuff? Because the installation process uh, needs a spe specific order of tests uh, to more or less get a running system out of it. And if uh, at some point it breaks, for example, uh, if it breaks in the um, time zone selection, the, co the installation cannot continue. And this, if I change uh, the time zone test and it breaks for a reason, someone else that wants to change another test cannot test his own stuff because he doesn't get to that point. So we, need, um, we needed a way how several people can have their own code on the same OpenQA instance. And there's a nice feature in OpenQA that we, of course, obviously need. Um, we can uh, test several distributions there in parallel, which have own, their own test repositories, their own NEAL repositories. And we can abuse this just um, to create kind of a fake distribution per user um, where um, we can, in parallel, develop without affecting each other. And Okay, this, this console output might be a bit um, <laughs> strange, but um, it's more or less the directory structure of OpenQA. Um, all the tests are in the test directory, and let's say a user Kenny wants to create his own distribution for himself to develop. He creates just a directory in this test directory, where, for example, there's also the um, OpenSUSE and SLE are the racial distributions we are usually testing. And so Kenny creates his own distribution. Um, he even can uh, fork the tests of OpenQA in uh, his own um, repository where he can develop and after he finished uh, his development, he can uh, open a pull request to upstream OpenQA. Um, 
after cloning all that stuff in there, you still have to create a few other directories, which is, mm, is somehow not so straightforward, but it's as it works. Um, it has to cre create also a subdirectory under the products subdirectory, where the main PM, which is the main schedule of OpenQA, um, needs to be copied from the distribution you want to base your stuff on, which in this case is OpenSUSE. And then you also need the needles directory. Um, short explanation, the needles are those things that you try to find in a haystack, which means um, those are the screenshots um, who you compare um, the screen output of QM with to find out uh, whether you see what you expected to see. And those are obviously dis different between uh, those main distributions, SLE and OpenSUSE, because we have a different the theming there. The Yast on Slash is black backgrounded, and the one on OpenSUSE is, until now at least, gray backgrounded. So we have different screenshots for different distributions, and so if you want to base, or base your fake distribution on that, in this case, use the open SUSE needles. And this is what the result of all this. And after you um, created your fake distribution, you can use the, uh, you can schedule jobs. Um, in this case, the best offered is usually the tool clone job, which uh, clones already existing old test runs with some tuned variables. In this case, you have to you clone the existing, already old existing test run 171 um, and overwrite the uh, parameter this tree with your new own distribution name, which is Kenny. And so you cover the open source distribution you want to test with your own, uh, that it uses its own, uh, your own test directory, your own needles and your own tests, and you get a nice test run. Yeah, let me just check where I am. And so we can uh, share one machine to, uh, for several people to develop tests. Um, of course, this is uh, not the only thing. Um, what we definitely, or what helped us a lot is that we uh, talked much more to, uh, with, Open QA, uh, with the QA department um, so, in all of our sprint meetings, in, um, so means sprint planning, sprint review, uh, review meetings, and standard meetings, we have someone from the QA department that we can really directly contact. This, is this guy here, <laughs> Josef. Um, and this helped us also a lot to avoid duplicates in work, although this doesn't work everywhere. We had this case where two, recently this case where actually QA and ourselves developed the same test, but we found this out as quite early. Yeah. Then, what else can we do with this, uh, with our own testing machine? Of course, uh, if you have a powerful machine you want to do, you want to automate stuff. What I'm planning for the future is actually, um, I also want to, I want to create those uh, driver update disk in an automatic way as soon, maybe even with, on, on check-in, so something with Jenkins, that we create a driver update disk and feed this automatically to our test runs. This might help us uh, in, have even less work with testing and support QA department with that, but I'm not yet at this point. Oh, there even another slide for this. So, I was a bit faster than expected, but uh, I guess 
you have some questions about that and feel free to ask them now. And, oh, yeah, someone needs a microphone. You can also use sign language if you want. So, Hernan, it's off, okay. The, maybe the PA guy can rise the slider. Okay, uh, now it's working. Uh, so, I'm not too familiar with OpenQA, but I was wondering if it's able to test things which are not the installation, but rather, for example, a web application running in a browser. Can you simulate a test of clicking and uh, using an, a a web application within this operating system? So, we've, uh, the, from the Yast side, from the Yast view, actually, we only care about installation more or less and this, that the system is usable. Uh, OpenQA, if you ever checked it, I've never, uh, if you checked our instances, we even test applications. One of them is also uh, Firefox. But testing a web application would actually include something like uh, use uh, boot an uh, existing installed image, this is possible, uh, start your application and then try to, to use your web application, but mouse clicks is something we did not use yet. It does support mouse clicks, it does work, we have used it for testing the OpenQA web UI, so okay. it can do it. The short answer is apparently you do. Uh, back then when I was, when we developed it, mouse was not really good to use. <laughs> it had its bad days, but it's better now. You had a question? Kulo has questions. Um, what I'm uh, wondering is on who is responsible and on what schedule are you updating the instance and the, the tests you base your development on? So it's coordinated the, during the sprint meetings or are you just floating? The point is that I did not really very good understand you because the speakers are in front of you. Um, on what on what time frame and who are you coordinating the updating of the system and the tests that you're developing on? Um, the test development is more or less just a manual thing. So someone uh, gets the job, someone in our team gets the job, uh, you implemented a feature, uh, please write a test for it. And then someone needs a test and does this manually. So and after manual scheduling, uh, manually testing, developing and testing the test, can do your submit request. So it's not that we automatically use it for now. What I want to do is, in future, of course, is doing something like that, but it's not yet the case. But the system, like the OpenQA installation? You mean how I update the OpenQA installation? Yeah, who does this and, and it's how also do you co coordinating this in the team? Um, usually, so far, I do this and um, the, we have a crunch up for, for the needle, for fe using fetch needles. This stuff is updated kind of every 15 minutes, something like that. Uh, but the OpenQA itself, I update when I see it as appropriate, which was recently the case when you changed the UI a bit. As soon as we notice that something does not work as expected or different than on the official instance, I know that I need to update something. But the tests and the needles are always up to date. No one else. Okay. <laughs> then. I'm still a bit early, but... So, thank you for listening to my talk. Uh, join the conversation 
as the temp presentation template suggests. <laughs> Have a lot of fun and join us. <laughs> at, at